Hey everyone, I thought a good place to start my next video on uh, pocket NC machining would be uh, with hold downs. And the pocket NC comes with this fantastic little micro vise uh, and it works really good and I used it in my first video um, and it's great for a lot of things but sometimes you just don't need a vise. Um, a lot of times on uh, traditional CNC machines and all kinds of milling machines you'll see these step clamps which is uh, sort of a little staircase block and a step clamp like this and you can set it at any height you like and then you use a piece of threaded rod or a bolt to uh, tighten it down and clamp your workpiece under here. Um, and those are really good uh, and I thought I might try to make something like that for my pocket NC but machining these little stairs on the pocket NC at this scale you'd need to use for this little workpiece would be really tough. Um, but there's a variant on the step clamp that uses uh, uh, a bolt going up through the bottom. So if, imagine if instead of having a, a step here, you had another piece of threaded rod sticking down that you could thread up and down to adjust the height, and then this one would tighten to clamp. Um, so I designed and made a couple of itty bitty little step clamp style uh, screw clamps where there's a uh, little foot bolt here that you use to adjust your clamping. Uh, height and then another bolt here that you use to tighten down the jaw and this is so itty bitty and I bet you're having a hard time seeing it maybe if I hold it over here uh, you can see more what I'm talking about uh, this is my model of my small clamp that I want to make this is the hole that will be tapped and we'll have a screw threaded up from below and this is the hole where the hold down screw will go with the counter bore for the head of the uh, hex or the uh, cap head screw uh, and the nose of the clamp with some tapered down areas around the jaw or the uh, nose or the tip or whatever we're going to call the gripping portion of the clamp. Um, so then as before I take this part and I import it into a file containing the pocket NC table. Uh, this time I'm not going to be using the pocket NC vise. I'm going to actually clamp a piece of aluminum down uh, to the threaded holes in the pocket NC table um, shimming it off the bed of the pocket NC slightly to make sure that we don't ever collide with the bed. Um, and I'll show you how that's done uh, when we get over to the pocket NC. But in the meantime, imagine, if you will, a, uh, a plate of stock, something like this, um, that these will all be milled out of. Each of these clamps has six separate toolpaths to complete it, so we have six toolpaths uh, total. Um, each one does the same operation on all three clamps. The first one just does the uh, outline or the profile of each one, uh, and I did that with a 2D contour. Um, in 2D contour, you have the option of leaving tabs, which I believe is under, and it's a long one, um, under geometry here. Um, I left pretty big tabs because I'm going to free these parts using the bandsaw, um, but you can leave much smaller tabs, I'm sure. Um, or more of smaller tabs, and then free the parts with uh, a knife or wire cutters um, fairly easily. Um, but since I'm going to be using the bandsaw, I just decided to leave bigger tabs and not worry about um, the parts moving or vibrating in any way. Um, the second toolpath is uh, an adaptive clearing that basically faces off the extra stock from on top of the parts, um, I did these in really shallow passes because I have the end mill, uh, and the way I have this part fixtured, I have the end mill sticking out of the spindle quite a ways, um, and this is not one of the end mills from the Pocket NC toolkit. Um, it's just a cheapo off eBay, and so I get a lot of uh, chatter and wiggle. Um, so I decided to take really uh, shallow passes on all, all of these toolpaths. Um, since it's small parts and it uh, doesn't take that long anyways, um, it's not a huge waste. The third toolpath is basically the exact same operation, but on the noses of the clamps. Um, on this one, it's fairly important, I found, to use the rest machining functionality to, uh, to make sure that you're not milling out a whole bunch of extra stock, um, since there's going to be a lot of this already taken care of by the facing we just did in the last toolpath. The, um, the outline here I have set to be the outline of this face. Um, so that it doesn't mill anything outside. We know we already did the profiling operation on this path, so there's 
at least an eighth of an inch of clear space outside this path. Uh, and we don't have to worry about colliding with things as we go on that boundary. Um, the other thing that's important on this toolpath is it's the first time we're using the uh, fourth axis of the pocket NC, so we have to set the tool orientation, um, which is here. And uh, you do this by selecting the Z axis that you, your, your desired Z axis relative to the Z axis of your part. Um, and for me, I want the tool to be coming in uh, perpendicular to the face that we're about to uh, operate on. Um, so I selected one of these faces to be my z-axis, uh, and it knows that I want it, I mean, perpendicular to that face. And then the x-axis, I want to be the same as it was before. Um, so I select one of the uh, crossways edges anywhere on the part, <coughs> and, uh, and that takes care of it. Uh, and that will rotate. The, if the machine is uh, horizontal, sitting like this, that will rotate the machine to be this. Uh, so the z-axis will be on this uh, new orientation vector. Then we start getting into the circular things. Uh, and first I do the counterbore on the top of each clamp. Um, and I'm using just a plunge for this. Um, it'd probably be better to use a ramp. But this end mill is a cheapo, and it doesn't mind plunges that much. Um, so uh, I just decided to let it plunge. Sometimes I have issues with ramps um, in aluminum, and I think that's just because I'm not that familiar with ramps as a machining strategy. Um, someone more knowledgeable or more willing to experiment might have better luck there. Um, after the counter bore, I do the same, the same strategy effectively on the main screw holes for the hold down screws um, all the way through the part and I take really shallow passes on those just because it is plunging into aluminum with an end mill and that's not really all that great um, so I only want to do a little at a time. Um, so now I'll take you over the machine and I'll show you exactly how I have this stock fixtured on the machine um, and then uh, we'll watch it go and uh, I'll show you the parts. So as I just mentioned, uh, I, it, I couldn't fixture this work in the vise because it's too big um, and I couldn't put it right against the table because my end mill is a little bit too short and when the table comes up like this it doesn't get all the way to the table. Um, and I wanted to use this end mill because it's already getting sort of wrecked anyways and uh, I didn't want to, I was testing out tool pass for this and I didn't want to use a brand new end mill on it. Um, so I figured I would just shim it up and so what I have here are a bunch of uh, pieces of acrylic or plastic of some kind that was in the scrap bin at my makerspace. Uh, and what I did was I took the, the model of the pocket NC table and just exported a sketch of the top of it with all the holes in it and then laser cut that out of acrylic. Uh, and so this is about an, uh, half an inch worth of, um, a little less, probably three eighths of an inch worth of plastic under here. And then I'm just using some M4 screws through the piece of aluminum that I'm going to cut my stack clamps out of. Um, right into the threaded holes in the table. Uh, and just those two screws is enough to hold it super still um, when, the, uh, when the machine's running and I get clamps out of it pretty consistently. I've already run this toolpath twice. I've already got six of these clamps um, in my testing, but I'm going to run it again uh, for your benefit.
So here are three clamps fresh off the pocket NC. Um, you can see um, there's uh, the holes, the bottom of the holes didn't quite punch all the way through, but you can see them on the back just there. And what that is, is that's because we used an end mill to drill those holes, um, and they're only slightly larger than the end mill. Um, and that's not really how you're supposed to do that, um, and an end mill is not designed for drilling, so they didn't quite pop out the back all the way. Um, but if we uh, just hit those with a file, that'll come right out. Um, so I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and cut those tabs, and uh, then we'll see the result. All right, and here we are. I, uh, I went ahead and tapped the hole in this one uh, so I could demonstrate exactly how they work because uh, it was fairly tough to see in the other camera angle what I was showing because the clamp was so tiny. So you can imagine if this was the workpiece, obviously you wouldn't, you'd have a much a larger chunk of stock, but just for sake of argument, um, that would be like that. Then you can adjust this screw and have it screw of any length you want in either of these holes to uh, cantilever your, your clamp. And then when you tighten down the center screw, your hex key, it uh, clamps the work between the screw in the back and the workpiece based on the clamping force you give it here. So now that's held in place really good. And if I were to have two or three of these clamps holding down a block, I could hold a whole big block of stock here without, uh, without it moving around and without having to worry about the vise getting loose or anything like that. I can hold irregular plate stock and uh, things like that. So these little clamps will be pretty, ha pretty handy, I think, for me. And uh, I'll put the, uh, the file, the model file, in the, uh, in the video description somehow And uh, if you feel like making one for yourself. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll probably be uh, putting up another video pretty soon of uh, how I do my tool length offset calibration for the Pocket NC. And um, I'll see you then. Thanks, bye.